Hello, and welcome to another edition of Florida Sportsman Action Spotter Podcast. I'm Captain Rick Riles. Hey, I tell you what, we're going to have a great time tonight, and we're going to check out where every fish in Florida is hanging out right now. We'll start with a quick trip to paradise for me to get my billfish fixed over in Costa Rica, and then we're coming back. We'll start up in the northeast corner of Florida, work our way down the east coast, through Ala Morata, up the west coast, and out the panhandle. We will be able to tell you what's hanging out where, anywhere you want to fish. Hey, Florida Sportsman Action Spotter Podcast is brought to you each and every week by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. By Shimano, bringing people and nature together. By Tournament Master Chum. Oh, it's the best chum on earth. By Nassara Paradise Rentals, your dream billfish destination. By DOA Lures, the unfair advantage. And by Young Boats. You want the finest in flat spay and offshore hybrids? You need to check out youngboats.com. Hey, and I tell you what, if you've got any questions about our Action Spotter podcast or you'd like to rate us, please do. We'd love to hear from you and hear how you enjoy it every week. I, gosh, I sit down and I do it every week and I often wonder, anybody really listening? So let us know. And particularly if you've got a question about any of the areas or the techniques that we cover. Well, let's get it rolling. We're going to take a quick trip to paradise and check in with one Craig Sutton. Craigie, how are you? I'm good, Ricky. Real good, buddy. How's life in Nassara, Costa Rica? Well, we're fired up. This is the last week of details wrapping up on the boats. Now, we did fish a couple weeks ago. Uh, we got trips next week, but we're just wrapping up all that maintenance we did. And, but, you know, it, it, this rainy season, technically, it ended in September. Mm-hmm. We didn't have We didn't have a normal full moon. October rainy season, and we kind of schedule everything around that. That's our worst moon as far as rain goes, is the full moon in October. But it's, I think we got out of cycle. It was, we just didn't get the rain, mm, which I'll is fine. There. Okay. You know, it's just everything's kind of early, but you know, we're fishing next week a bunch, and then week after that, it's wide open. Are you hearing anything from the locals? What's going on? What's biting right now? We're really the only ones that have fished, you know, the last darned. month and a half. I mean, that those few trips we did, which were pretty good, you know, the inshore bite was good, which was, that again tells you that the rainy season wasn't the normal amount of rain in October because those were in the second week, I mean, yeah, second week of October, and the inshore water was good. I mean, it wasn't super duper clear, but it was real good, and they got you know, they got an 80, 75, 80 pound rooster. That's a pretty good day. That's a real good one. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> yeah, and they yeah. lost a couple other ones. Alex told me that they, they, they came in late in the afternoon and put the live baits out. You know, lost a big cabrera, lost about a 35 pound rooster, and then got that big one. Hey, let me ask you a question. Okay. I've, yes, sir. I've been down there and I know how I feel, and you know I'm your biggest fan, and I, I'll be going back this. I, it's so funny because I asked my son, we were together last night, and I said, you know, we got another adventure to plan this year because we've, we've sworn to each other we're going to take an adventure every year, just the two of us. And he said, well, Costa Rica ain't bad. <laughs> I said, yeah, <laughs> you're right. Maybe we'll go back there. Yeah. But but I've we've caught blue marlin. We've caught sailfish. We've caught them all down there. I think – what fish is it that gets people hooked on Costa Rica and bringing them back? Well, they a lot of people hear the the, the word or uh, the slang phrase "pura vida," right. and they kind of don't. They they may think they know the definition, of, but you come to our area of Costa Rica, and that's the true meaning of that phrase. It's it's more than just a slang phrase. It's a it's a mental attitude, it's the food, it's the nature, it's the environment, it's what, how they respect it and other people. And incredible honesty, and it's just, it's an experience. And and people, sometimes they, people will, will rush in and rush out, and they don't settle down and really absorb what's all around them and, and the community and the people. And they miss it. It's a it's a heartbreaker for me, but you got it. I mean, you know, Roger got it. It's just people get it, and it's it's infectious. It you know, it makes people go just. I mean, they just they can't think of anything else. It's it's, it's, it's an infectious problem sometimes. Craig, <laughs> but, I, I I gotta tell you, 
I went, I love New Orleans. I I went to New Orleans one night and I love jazz. And my wife and I are walking down a little side street, and here's a little corner bar, and there's about a 350 pound guy in there, and he's blowing a sax, and he mm-hmm. can he can blow a sax like nobody's business. And I walked in there, and as you know, I'm not a drinking man, but you had to buy two drinks per song or per set or whatever. I spent $67 on Diet Cokes, okay, <laughs> just just so I could sit there in that atmosphere and listen to that guy play that sax. Well, I was down at your little beach hut, beach hut cafe or whatever it is, down at the end of the street. Yep, yep, yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. Holy smokes, yeah. Craig. We walked in there, and there was a guy playing a fiddle. Do you know the guy I'm talking about? Young kid. Uh Oh, no, no, I don't know him. Buddy, I'm going to tell you what. He was incredible. And it was the same feeling. Everybody there was talking to people they'd never met before, buying each other drinks, just sharing what a magic time we'd had. And you're absolutely right. It was Pura Vida. The music was great. The conversation was better, and the atmosphere was perfect. But it started. When you got off the plane, no it started doubt. But long before when you arrived there, you were just kind of continuing that mindset over it. It's, it's, it really, and you know, I started going to Mexico and Central America when I was real young, when I was like 18. And, you know, when I came into that area of Costa Rica, and of course we're talking, I mean, you're talking to somebody who puts their money where their mouth is and a lot of labor on top of them. But when I came to that area of Costa Rica after my my first trip when I came back down there, and I kind of, you know, at that time I was a little younger and I was paying attention to some different stuff, wasn't tuned in like I should. That second <laughs> time down there, I was like, you know, this is really, really unique. And, and then you start factoring in that beach being one of the world's oh, yeah. top 10 oh, yeah. beaches in the world, the community, the top 15 com- beach communities in the world, the closest to to 600 feet of water of anybody in Central America, the least amount of rain of anybody in Central America. Current is unique. It collides and it doesn't run parallel. You know, I mean, it's just, and there's not a major tributary that pollutes that inshore to the, to the down current um, side. And so, I mean, it just, it's unique on so much stuff. It's for a guy that likes to, if you like the outside surfing, fishing, yoga, just hanging out and enjoying wildlife nature. You know, it's it's a it's the proverbial nirvana. And and the best dogs in the world. Without you got yeah. the you got yeah, the greatest got you need when, I know they don't they don't fight with each other. Never. When, you know, you when, know when you go back down there I'm sure you'll see Jagger again. Jagger's my dog. Make sure you tell him I said hello, okay? Oh yeah, well he, I'm sure he remembers you. Oh, I know he, he does. You're the only person he, he's the friend of. Right, I, right, right. I'm the <laughs> yeah. only one that ever fed him from the table. <laughs> Craigie, yeah. I love All you. Right. We appreciate it, and we'll talk next week. Likewise, Thanks, thank Craig. you, buddy. Craig Sutton from Nasara Paradise Fishing. All right, let me tell you something. If you were going to put me anywhere in Florida near the end of October like this, I bet you it's going to be right there in my home waters in Northeast Florida. That's where Captain David Boris is. You had a few bites this week, did you? Ricky, it was a really good week. Uh, water temperatures are, you know, remaining nice and cool, which which I like because the fish tend to fight a lot better. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Lots of fish this week. We we're, we're seeing uh, black a, a lot, uh, quite a few more black drum uh, than we have in the past uh, past couple of weeks. So the black drum fishing has really picked up. Uh, a lot of young puppy drums, which uh, a lot of people like to take home. But uh, I tell you what was heartbreaking this week, Ricky. Man, I released a lot of flounder this I week. Know. I know. You can't, I don't know if that was a you, good thing. You know, you, I, I there was there was one that went four and a half pounds, and man, that was painful. But I, I, I'm sure. I hope. I've talked to several other captains, and, and they're all saying the same thing. One captain said, "Hey, I released a five pounder this week." So. So a lot of big flounder are being released by uh, by the, by, the um, by us, you know, by the fishermen, the recreational fishermen. What I mean to say, but uh, still plenty of snapper, Rick. I mean, I was, you know, you asked me this week, do you think it's the snapper are done? 
No. Okay. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, they're still still finding some good snapper. And, you know, a lot of the spots I, I, I go to, I say, well, we'll probably won't, we probably can't get a keeper off of here, so let's don't stick around. And right then the next fish we catch is a, you know, a 12, 13-incher. But uh, I was surprised to see still plenty of, plenty of the snapper. Uh, also seeing some croaker, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that should tell you where I'm fishing. I'm fishing a lot of deep holes um, this time of the year. I love to, uh, you know, when the water gets really low, I love to sneak back in those creeks and hit some of those deep holes. But also this time of year, you know, I, I get people call me up and they say, well, what should we fish, high water, low water? You know what? They've been biting on both ends of the tide, Rick, uh, catching them at high water, up against the grass, in the grass. And then again at low water on the drop offs into deep water. But all in all, it's been really good. Trout's definitely picked up. I'm, you know, it was really, it's been a poor trout year. Uh, but these last, this past week, uh, you know, we're picking up three and four, maybe even five trout on a trip now. Mm-hmm. Well, that's better than it has been. We do have a long way to go with our trout fishery, no doubt. But. David, yep. I, I think it's going to stay. I don't see a big change coming. It's going to cool down some. I think that'll make him bite even better. I think we're in for an even better week. Yeah, I think so, Rick. And, you know, according to the Farmer's Almanac and, and things like that, they're saying we're going to have a mild winter, you know. And, and that's that's a possibility. But, you know, I know there's going to be a cold one coming soon. We are definitely do. And uh, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm looking forward. I, I'm out there tomorrow. So, uh, plus I got a busy weekend coming up, so I, I'm really looking forward to getting out and, uh, working the, uh, working these flats, working the grass and, uh, catching as many reds as I can. All right, buddy. I appreciate it. As always, David, let's make sure we talk next week. Okay. I'll be here, Rick. Cam David Boris from the Northeast corner. Now we're going to head down to mid central and see what Jimmy Ross is up to. Jimmy, how are you? <laughs> Fantastic. How are you doing this week, Rick? You still got mullet? We don't have any mullet, but Uh-oh. we have got red fish like you have. You could not believe. Really? In the lagoon on, or where? Uh, out on the beach. It is It is on fire. This past week has been one of the best weeks I, have, I can ever remember. And I'm not that young, so I've got a couple of memories. No, no, no. You remember when um ahab got moby dick so i mean i you've been around a while so. i helped him <laughs> I, I, I helped him handle the line <laughs> i hear you i hear you um no it's uh it is absolutely on fire um redfish just redfish galore pond inlet canaveral even down at sebastian there's just a lot of redfish near coastal fish that are anywhere from about 30 inches up to about 45 inches every once in a while you'll even get one that'll top the 45 inch mark Whew. um my son Justin was out today. Uh, I had a cancellation this morning, but my son was out. They had 33 redfish and six snook in a half day trip. Oh my goodness! Oh my yeah. goodness! He, he said, "Dad, we had so many doubles and triples." He goes, "I lost count of them all." He goes, "I had to at the end of the day, I had to ask each guy how many fish he actually caught so we could add them all back up." So now, now, what was he doing, Jim? Live bait. Uh, was he anchored live, up, or was he thrown got, into schools, got, or what was he doing? We've got po- we've got pogey pods that are that are holding in the canaveral bite area, and those pogey pods are just loaded with fish. And even if you're even if they're not on the pod, because what'll happen is if if there's a whole bunch of feeding activity that goes on on a pod by the redfish or the tarpon, all of a sudden the sharks move in, and when the sharks move in, the rest of the fish kind of get back out and away from them. So they'll just, they're still in the canaveral bite area from the tip of the cape to the buoy line and into the uh, jetty area. But you just kind of side scan, find where you're marking some fish and just start drifting through those areas and you're getting double and triple hookups at a time. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Now, what's the status on snook? Are they open in your area now? Snook are open here. Now, most of these fish are all too big to keep. Um, okay. They're all 34 to about 38 inches on average. Um he had he he did have one today that was was probably thirty nine might have gone forty. Um, there's there's some big ones and mm-hmm. and I actually talked to, uh, I talked to another captain uh, Captain Alex Gorichki, uh, He on Friday uh, he was out 
and he was throwing croakers against the South Jetty of all places and got a 45-inch snook. That's a monster, Jimmy. That's a bigger so snook than I've ever caught. That's a monster. Yeah, me too. Me too. So there's some big ones running around right now. Um, plenty of sharks. If you like shark fishing, <laughs> shark bite is on fire. Um, black nose, black tip, spinners. They're chasing topwater plugs. They're eating live baits, of course, chunk baits. But the artificial bite for the for the sharks on top is, as you know, that, that's explosive. And I love doing that. You lose lures here and there. Oh, but, sure you man, do. You know, just watching those things just crush a topwater plug is just amazing. And then there's still some tarpon here. And the, and then uh, moving farther offshore, the guys that are fishing on the south end of the 27 Fathom Ridge are doing really good on some giant beeliners. I'm talking four, four and a half pound beeliners. That's, which that's our, giant. Our beeliners, right. Yeah, our beeliners are normally, you know, a pound, pound yeah, and a half. Sure. These yeah. things are so big, they look they look like a cross between a red snapper and a queen snapper. They look so big. You know what they look like to me, Jimmy? It's so funny, and I've been blessed to catch some of those monsters you're talking about. But they look like they outgrow their, their head. You know, it's yes. like it's their like their bodies head. are so fat. Right. Yeah. I know it. I know it. And I have literally been on bites of them before where you only got about every third one because they were so big and heavy that they would literally rip through their lip. I mean, they couldn't really? support their own weight. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's unbelievable. Biggest one I ever saw. I didn't catch it. I wish I had. I was on the boat. But biggest one I've ever seen caught was seven pounds. That's that's way. That's way a giant. Yeah, yeah. It is. That's a giant. Well, buddy, that's a great report. And I'm awfully glad to hear it uh, going well for you. You say there's no mullet left, huh? They all threw? We didn't. Yeah, the last couple of days, it's been pretty slim on the mullet. I, I know that this next cold front we get is going to kick that back into gear again. It might. Um, it's definitely going to change the pattern, so we're we're looking forward to that. The one thing that I can say is these little lulls in between mullet spurts, and we you know we were so heavy with them last week, but these little lulls, it seems like we get better quality fish. Hmm. We're getting the tarpon, we're getting the redfish, we're getting the sharks, we're getting the snook. When the mullets start running again, we get you know the bluefish, the, yeah, the Spanish yeah, mackerel, true. the ladyfish, and the jacks all kind yeah. of kick back in. Yeah. So. If you're looking for bigger fish in between the mullet spurts that are coming down the beach, seems to be a better time. When you get in the mullet, you're gonna, you're definitely gonna find that you're gonna get some of those other species as well. However, if you get on a pod that's got a lot of tarpon and sharks in it, you won't find as many of those smaller fish because the sharks will eat them just as oh. fast as they'll eat a mullet. And real quick, as I let you go, Jim, I've got a new secret shark spot for you. So what's that? Um, you ready? Yeah. The Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> there is no place. There is no there is no ten foot square of water left in the Atlantic Ocean without a shark in it. I'm telling you. It, well, I, I wish that I wish that uh, you know, National Fisheries would listen to some of us uh, guys because I tell you the, the the sandbar shark population here is just devastating everything else that you try and catch. Oh yeah, I mean, they'll, grouper, eat it. they'll eat snapper, a cobia. I promise you. King mackerel, yep. cobia, yep. the sandbars are wearing them out. And you know, according to their count, there's only there's there's about as many as there are red snappers. So there's like three <laughs> of them in the whole ocean. Right. But you and I, right. I, I you and I, I think have a better count uh, I, on, I, on that stock. I think we may have a little more knowledge in that area. Jimmy, I appreciate it so much. Please tell me we can talk to you next week. Looking forward to it, buddy. If anybody wants to get a charter, check our website, Fineline Fishing Charters. And, man, I tell you what, it's been a good year. And if you want to catch something right now, it's a great time. Between now and Thanksgiving, it's just a great and time it, to be and there. And it's cool, and it's great to be on the water. You're absolutely yes, right. Yes, it is. Thank you, Jim. Take care, Rick. Fineline Fishing Charters. Take care. You know what Yamaha outboards love? The genuine formula and consistency of Yamalu marine engine oils. Blood, 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 blood. Outboards are subjected to punishing conditions like high loads, salt, and humidity, a mix that automotive oils can't handle. Yamalu full synthetic and marine performance formulas are certified to protect against friction and corrosion for reliable performance every time. Ah. Find Yamalu marine oils at your nearest Yamaha outboard dealer. Locate them at yamahaoutboards.com backslash dealers. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Hey, Rod.
Dodge, you know, being consistent is a mark of a quality product. If you've been Florida's number one chum for over 10 years, there's got to be a reason. For 10 years, Tournament Master Chum has lived up to his name. That's why more tournament pros insist on Tournament Master than any other chum. It's the only chum with Menhaden milk mixed right in. That means it gets a scent out faster and deeper than any other brand of chum. It comes in a grind size for every species from kingfish to catch and bait. Your fishing time is way too precious to you second-rate chum. Bring the action to you by insisting on Tournament Master Chum. It's worth every penny. When you're ready for the finest in custom-made flat spay or inshore-offshore hybrids, you are ready to meet the Young family in Inglis, Florida. For over 21 years, the Young family has built custom boats one at a time for every type of fishing. Nothing can sneak up on a flat quite like the Gulf Shore flats boats, and I've never fished a better hybrid than the Young 24s and 27s. Rob Young is a naval architect who takes tremendous pride in each and every build for each and every customer that wants their boat custom-built exactly the way they want want it is it time for you to move up are you ready to own the finest boat built then you need to visit the young boat facility in inglis florida or check them out online at youngboats.com now we're going to move down to the east coast a little bit further south my favorite little fishing village Stewart, florida and talk to one john Earhart. john how are you i'm good glad to be here rick man i tell you what it's uh it's been an interesting week. We keep waiting on that cold weather. It just doesn't come. I think all the sailfish that you're looking for are, uh, are off of northeast Florida. I heard a bunch of them there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's still been pretty good offshore fishing this week. Uh, we got a lot of small mahi. I mean, they are legal size, but they're, they're not the affers, but, you know, you can take them home for dinner. There's been, there's been a few sailfish mixed in. You know, some guys are getting as many as six sailfish a trip, and there's been a lot of big black fin tunas mixed in. So, I mean, 90 to 120, you got mahi, tuna, sailfish, the occasional kingfish. And, you know, a lot of these guys are just trolling dead bait right now with, with dredges down a little deeper in the water column to bring up the sailfish and the tuna. So, I mean, it's been pretty steady. You know, some scattered grass in that 90 to 120, and, and you better be ready to catch some pelagics. Oh, that's real good. That sounds awfully good. I'm glad to hear a few sailfish down there, too. John, it, it wasn't a great mahi spring by any means. But it seems to be a little better this fall. Is that my imagination, or has it been better? Yeah, it, it seems like, you know, we had a real weak spring run, but it seems like it, later in the year has been pretty consistent as far as just, you know, catching mahi all through late fall. And, and you know, I think even early winter, we're going to have quite a good run of mahi this year. So I'm thinking December, January, we may get some of those big bull dolphins like I used to get years ago, you know, when we get those wintertime cold fronts. That would be just fine with me. What's going on inshore? Inshore fishing's been pretty steady. The mullet runs, the mullet runs still around. It seems like they're they're kind of tapering off a little bit. They might be migrating out of our region, but there's still a lot of mullet around. We got finger mullets, and we got the the larger silver mullets migrating through. And there's been a lot of tarpon and a lot of big snook around. You know, early morning, late evening, you're pretty much guaranteed going to get snook and tarpon right now. Some jack cravels mixed in, sharks few trout and redfish but but we've had a lot of big snook and a lot of big tarpon around so if, if you want to catch snook and tarpon it's too windy to get offshore cast net a few dozen mullet and and be ready to catch some of the biggest biggest game fish of the season now john let me ask you when you do that are you uh, you're cast net and i'm assuming in the surf or or along uh, along the waterway there are a lot of guys fishing in the surf with the mullet or are they bringing them all back in shore so there's, when the conditions allow you to fish in the surf, yeah, the, the surf fishing has definitely been the best for the tarpon. But if the conditions don't allow, like there's a bunch of grass on the beach or the waves are real rough, you know, or the fish are just hanging out further outside where you can cast them, that's when you want to bring them back in the river, you know, and fish fish along mangrove shorelines, seawalls, docks, and such. You know, basically, you just want to find where there's some mullet congregated, and I can almost guarantee you're going to see snook and tarpon popping out of the water chasing these fish. Find the bait. And you're going to find the predators. It's, it's that easy right now. Sweet. Absolutely fantastic. I love this time of year. John, thanks so much for a great report. It sounds like it's time for people to head to Stewart. Uh, please tell me we can talk with you next week. Yes, sir. I look forward to talking to you next week. Thanks again, John. Captain John Earhart from down in Stewart, Florida. Now, let's take a minute for a word from DOA. Well, just like John said, it's finally fall. And how many of us... 
had been waiting for the magic of the mullet run to start with literally miles of mullet moving along just about every stretch of Florida coastline. What you need to cash in on the tarpon, snook, reds, trout, and flounder that are feasting on these poor fingerlings is the perfect mullet imitation. Well, for my money, you can skip all the high-dollar made-in-China mullet imitators. For me and all the podcasters I've talked with, the perfect mullet imitation is made right here in Stewart, Florida, and it's the DOA Bait Buster. Mark Nichols is the owner and manufacturer of the DOA, and he spent years designing different bait busters to swim shallow, medium, or deep. What makes a bait buster so special? Well, I think it's the tail. If your bait buster is moving at all, that tail is flapping, and no predator can stand that tail wagging in his face. The DOA Bait Buster is the perfect mullet run bait. Our thanks to Captain John Earhart for letting us know that the dolphin are biting off Stewart. That is great news, and the mullet are still there. Any mullet down your way, Captain Alan Sherman? We got some bait here for sure, but we don't have as much bait here as I saw in Jupiter on Friday. Uh Holy, they've got some bait. And hopefully that stuff will be here in a couple of days because you literally could walk on the bait in Jupiter. Pilchards, uh, big schools of finger mullets, silver mullets, just name it. They were there and they were everywhere. Well, um, uh, the, we've uh, got, so the, their, their reputation tells me they're headed your way. I mean, they got to get there, right? Well, well, it's got to get cooler. You know, it's still pretty hot here. And uh, they say we are going to get some cool weather over the weekend and maybe another bump uh, next week as well. So hopefully those two cold fronts will push part of that uh, bait closer to us. We have bait here. We have schools of mullet. We have finger mullet and silver mullet. Uh, We have schools of pilchards, but they're isolated. You know, there's some here, there's some there, and there's fish feeding on them, which is making things pretty interesting. But I'm telling you, when I was up there in Jupiter on Friday, oh, my goodness, it was like a dream come true. We didn't catch a lot of fish. And that's one of the things about having a lot of bait in your area. Mm -hmm. These fish have a lot to choose. Yes, they do. (laughs) Yes, That artificial you may be throwing looks pretty good to you. But when they've got 10,000 other choices, Mm -hmm. you got to get lucky and get that thing in front of a fish that's hungry. And we were able to do that. You know, up there we had snook. We had... uh, Prevels and uh, we missed some other fish, but we had a nice day. And then we got bombarded by rain, which keeps uh, plaguing us, not just up there, but down here in Miami as well. It's been raining mostly through the day, but it's going to get uh, drier each and every day as we, we move closer to the weekend. And I'm excited about that. Getting to the fishing we have here, the offshore fishing continues to be steady. There's still some dolphin out there, maybe not as many as we had a week or two ago. Uh, There was a really nice rip. I was talking to Jimbo Thomas just a little while ago, and he said before the weekend, uh, there was a beautiful rip. Not a lot of seaweed on it, but there was a lot of floating debris, and every piece of floating debris had dolphin on it. And These were heavy lifters, gaffers, Mm. and then there was some wahoo underneath them as well. Mm, That's that, that That rip was in 1,000 feet of water, and it has dissipated since. Mm -hmm. So the fish are still around. They're just not as easy to find. The debris is not as easy to find. But if you're going out this weekend, you know, that's something you want to look for. Look for a frigate bird, a couple of them diving to the surface. Look for some floating debris with some birds around it. And chances are you're going to hit a school of dolphin and a few wahoo underneath that. So something to, to look forward to on the weekend. And then closer to shore, there's been kingfish. The kingfish started biting again, and they're decent fish anywhere from 5 to 10 pounds with a few 20-pounders mixed in. Um, there's some blackfin tunas, mostly small, uh, bonitas, of course, barracudas and sharks. Uh, so there's some surface fish to be caught. I understand there was uh, some uh, sailfish caught off a of Triumph Reef just the other day, uh, so there's some sailfish around. Uh, so definitely have some fish to fish for out there on the ocean side. Uh, bottom fishing's been pretty good. The yellowtail snappers continue to bite very well. Uh, the guys anchoring, getting a good chump slick going out anywhere from 40 to 80 feet of water on a reef, uh, especially if you mark some fish on your machine. Just get up current of it, uh, anchor up, get some chum going, and fish the lightest weight possible to get your bait near the bottom. 
uh, and you should be able to pick up these yellow tails and maybe a few nice muttons, which they're also catching. Uh, so the bottom fishing has been good too. You know, uh, Alan, you, close, yes. you hit on a very good point there that I, I want guys to make sure they heard. The best way to catch a big yellowtail is for your bait to look exactly like the chum around it. So I I, I saw often see people using a maybe a half ounce weight or a quarter ounce weight. It shoots that bait straight to the bottom. That's that's not where it is for those yellowtail to see boats every day. You've you got to be floating as part of the slick, don't you? You really do, but there's another twist to that. Uh, and, and definitely if you want the big yellow tails, you want to be using no weight if you can, right. can help it. Light leaders, small hooks, uh, a bait that kind of, you know, fits in with your chum. But we don't always have current. You know, there's a lot of times where there is no current. And more often, you might go out there and hit a day, you know, where there is no current. And that's when these fish will stay close to the bottom. Mm-hmm. So the guy using that half ounce or the quarter ounce, he may end up catching more fish than, than the guy that's float lining with a, you know, just a piece of bait and a hook because these fish aren't coming up. They're just staying close to the bottom. So there are some times when you have to fish that way. I know on the party boats when I work those, um, I think there were more nights where they fed on the bottom than they, than they did when they came up to the surface. How about that? But there's, there's no fish that's more fun to catch than a yellowtail that's feeding on the surface. Yeah, that, uh, you're right. You're right. That's a, that, that that's strike, a good bite. Yep. That strike will hook you yep. as well as the fish, and you'll fish for them forever just for that one bite. Yep, you're uh, exactly right. I don't disagree good a bit. Good eating fish. And you just, taught great me, eating fish. you just taught me and everybody else a whole lot about yellowtail fishing. Captain Allen, yeah, we you, appreciate the heck out of it. Please tell me we can talk to you again next week. Of course, Rick. We look forward to it. All right, me too. Captain Alan Sherman from Get 'em Sport Fishing Charters. Now, what's better than Kokomo? What's better than going down to Alamorada? In fact, I'd like to picture Captain Brandon and his lovely girlfriend and me sitting at the Tiki Hut. Can we find a Tiki Hut in Alamorada, Brandon? I think there might be a, uh, one around somewhere. <laughs> so I've heard. Tell me how the fishing's been. You know, fishing's been uh, really good. Um, I got to say, fall is probably my favorite time of year down here, even more than spring. Wow. You know, you're, you're having the change in the season, so you have a lot of migrating fish. You know, they're still catching mahi offshore, but now the reef site is teeing up with uh, a variety of mackerels and muttons and groupers. Uh, but, you know, with it being fall and not spring, you don't have as much tourism down here. So, if everyone wants to come down, uh, flights are cheaper, hotels are cheaper, not long waits at restaurants. Uh, and, yeah, just a lot of migration fish around, a lot of variety, some summer species left over, some winter species moving in. As far as the backcountry is concerned, uh, sometimes you get a little bit of a window for tarpon bite, but kind of kind of coming towards the end of that, sometimes you get some juveniles in the uh, you know in the mangrove creek. But uh, the snook and reds uh, are definitely heating up along with some black drum, some sheep's head, uh, some cobia, some uh, mangrove snappers are always there. Uh, sheep trout are definitely, uh, population of them is getting higher. So, yeah, lots of different fish around, lots of variety, and uh, cooling off water uh, makes uh, for a great day. Now, now let me ask you a question. Uh, Ala Morata, of course, is probably the most famous or one of the two or three most famous fishing destinations in the country, what is the number one fish you think people come down there to catch? You know, uh, it's offshore. Uh, it's, it's sailfish in the winter and mahi in the summer. Uh, but if it's that country, definitely tarpon. You huh. know, they say Boca Grande Pass is the uh, tarpon capital of the world. Well, I like to try to claim Isla Mata as the tarpon capital of the world. And that's because you have an amazing tarpon fishery down here. But boats are not like rafted up to each other where you can jump from boat to boat to boat. It's, uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. And it's definitely, I would say, uh, where we get tourists that are more spread out. You get people from Europe who come over um, from like March, April, May when that's that hot season for tarpon. So I would say tarpon 
as the staple of Isla Mirada. Oh, that's cool. That's way cool. cool. That's way cool. See, now, I would have probably would have guessed been. bonefish. You don't, uh, you know, it, it seems to me like maybe bonefish have slipped in popularity a little bit in the last 10, 15 years. Are you, you seeing that? Yeah, well, uh, it's funny you mention that because uh, lately uh, bonefishing has been spectacular uh, for uh, September and October. Uh, even Ricky Stanzik, uh, Richard's son, who's not much of a bone fisherman, he has a 25 contender bay yeah, boat. That's he, not a bone he's fish been boat. having some of these rough days where he's been uh, catching bonefish that shakes up on the edge and flats and, uh, you know, kind of making something out of nothing on these really windy days where you don't want to travel far in a half day. And uh, I know some people have been catching um, six, seven, eight bonefish in a day. So, uh, September and October has been great bone fishing. Uh, their numbers are coming back. I know that there's a big decline in their population when there's those great freezes down here. Right. You, you remember like 2008, 2006, sure. 2012, mm-hmm. where uh, a huge population of them declined. But their numbers are definitely getting stronger. And um, But, yeah, I, I agree with you. It, it's kind of lost a little bit of popularity. But still, when people want to try to sight fish that bone fish, there's usually nowhere else to go than Isla Mirada and, you know, the lower keys, yep. you know. Yep, I believe it. Brandon, that's a great report. I'm glad to hear your fishing's holding up. Please tell me we can talk to you next week. Absolutely, you know it. All right, you got it. Captain Brandon Storen from down in Isla Mirada. Now we get to move over to 10,000 Islands where Steve Dahl is in charge of all of them. How are we doing, Captain Steve? I'm doing great. No complaints on my end, that's for sure. Good, 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 good. Has it been, as strong to a close, has it been a red October? You know what? We're still kind of waiting a little bit. You know, the snook fishing's still around. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, the reds are still offshore a little bit. Um, getting a little concerned because the schools are starting to disperse a little bit, and we're not seeing them on the inside. But we've got some weather coming which uh, should drop it pretty good. You know, we're going to have some lows in the 50s, it's looking like. Uh, hopefully, crossing my fingers, that's the case. But um, that should push it right along. So I think that's what we've been waiting for, for that, you know, we're real late on that first major cold front. and It's coming. So fingers crossed, hopefully by next week, we'll be talking about uh, just schooled up redfish on the outside of the islands and don't have to run far from them at all. But, you know, Everybody that's kind of fishing that pattern right now is catching snook. So it's not really a bad trade-off because the water temp's, you know, still a little bit warm. Um, no big breeders, if you will, you know, not a lot of big overslot fish, but there's some fish in the slot and there's certainly some, you know, fish in the high 20s, you know, but it's, uh, you know, there's action out there, that's for sure. So yeah. that's, you know, been really good. And we've had some favorable winds, which has been uh, nice because our crab traps, have been uh, marinating for a couple weeks now. And <laughs> I know what it's that time, means. It's time, Rick. I well, know what we're that finding, means. Yeah, we're finding them. You know, the triple tail are definitely around. Um, keepers are kind of few and far between, but that's typical in the first part of season, if you will, for these. Uh, we're seeing lots of juvenile fish on um, on pots, and we're seeing a lot of multiple fish on pots. Good so, deal. if you yeah, if you want to get out there and kind of hone your triple tail sight fishing skills. Now would be a really good time to do it, um, albeit it's going to probably be more than likely catch and release because the fish are under uh, undersized. But, you know, it's still darn fun, especially if you got a nice uh, calm day and uh, it'll really, you know, hone your skills, you know, for those bigger fish that should be coming. You know, maybe even this cold front brings them in, you know, a wave of fish. But uh, that's typical for the first couple of weeks, you know, if not first month. So we'll start seeing big fish here. Steve, let me ask you an important question. Um, yeah. When, let's see, how many years has it been since we raised the size limit and lowered the bag limit on triple tail? Uh, three. Okay. Are you seeing more juvenile fish than you were seeing three years ago? Yeah, we did a ton Good. last year. Good. You know, and this year, you know, I've been just kind of curious. I've been popping out there. You know, I know it's kind of early. And, you know, if I got some folks that want to at least, you know, you know, catch it, you know, I kind of always bring it up throughout the day and, you know, make some time for it if they want to experience that. And, you know, my telltale sign is just that if I'm seeing multiple, you know, small ones, I know, you know, things might be working a little bit with the size limit. And then when I start seeing multiple fish on pots, 
uh, I'll be a juvenile, then I, then I know this is going to be working. Yeah, so, yeah. I like yeah. it. I hope they keep it just like it is. All yeah, right, it's, Kemp. It's a sweet spot. I got so. I to tell you, I got yeah. back I got back in my kayak the other evening, paddled yep. way back in a creek on the quietest evening you could ever see. There's a big mm. old submarine back there rooting in the mud. She was just about mm. 31 inches and uh, yep. on that – on that eight weight from a kayak in a maximum of 10 inches of water. I mean, that was the deepest hole she oh. could find. Oh, yeah. my gosh, Steve, that is so much fun. It yeah, is I could just so watch that all night. And, and I want to catch it, I, but I won't. <laughs> I, I finally let her go. I, I just felt like, you know what, old lady, you and I got a lot in common. I mean, we gave it everything we had. We don't have any more. And I broke my fly rod down and started paddling for the house. I, I was there perfectly happy. I was just yeah. as happy as I could be. Cap, I well, appreciate the heck out of it. Please tell me uh, we can talk with you again next week. Oh, uh, can't wait. Wouldn't miss it. Thanks again, Steve. Captain Steve Dahl. Giving us a word from 10,000 Islands. You know, we got to go to Southwest Florida, but before we go there, let's stop and take a word from Shimano. You know, there's one thing just about all our podcasters have in common. We rely on Shimano gear when the best day is on the line. Whether it's Jim Ross chasing a tarpon with a Saragossa spinner or Alan Sherman catching muttons on his bait runners, Shimano gear is everywhere in Florida. You see, Shimano builds a reel for just about every fish that swims in Florida, and it seems like every year they come out with some new models with names that take me six months to pronounce correctly. But you know what? There's a couple of models that have stood the test of time, and they stand at the top of the brand even today. If I'm fishing an inshore spinner, be it fresh or salt, you can count on the fact that I'm throwing a Shimano Stratic. That's just because it's been around the block and it just never fails. And if there's a blue water boat looking for a sea monster, I can almost promise you there's Shimano Tiagras pulling the big fish baits. What do the best blue water guys count on Shimano year after year? For the same reason that I always throw a Stratic when I need to hook a redfish for my granddaughter. Because when the best day is on the line, you can count on the time-tested Tiagra and Stratic from Shimano. Our thanks to Steve Dahl for a great report from 10,000 Islands where he says the redfish are still holding offshore. He's a little concerned that the schools are breaking up. They're getting bored waiting for this cooler weather, I guess. I don't know, but let's move up north a little bit and hear from our man Greg Stamper to find out what's happening. Greg, talk to me. Hey, Rick. How you been, man? Uh, I, I'm, uh, I heard you talking a little bit about redfish, which is ironic. This week it did slow down a little bit for us. Uh, I didn't do it very much, but when I did do it, it wasn't bang, bang like I thought it would be. We do have a front coming down, but who knows? That whole thing may change up completely in another week. Greg, how much would you say your water temperature is above normal for this time of year? Uh, we're a little bit up, uh, 82, 83 right now. We have um, we got a, we got a lot of west winds coming. They've been more of the south direction, so that's bringing more moisture and a little bit more heat, but eventually one of these fronts is going to get through and start breaking things down. Uh, at that point, Rick, that's when everything changes in my neck of the woods for real. I can tell you one thing. This week I did notice, and that they all kind of know what's going on, that my juvenile tarpon are starting to back out of where they normally would be in the summer and moving on. So I know that change is in the air. I'm not going to do juvie tarpon anymore. And uh, that's kind of part of it. It kind of tells you they know, even though we don't know yet, they know. Yep, yep. The good Lord talks to them in their own language and lets, lets them know when that's they're right. supposed to come and go. You know, there's so, many, right. there's so many factors. I mean, you think about it. The days are getting shorter. I mean, there's a lot of signs in the air of seasons changing besides cold water. I mean, it, you're it's right, just you're uh, right. There's, there's, there's right. other ways for them to know when it's time to go, but I am with you. I think a good cold snap will help us out a lot. But uh, Yeah, that'll get everything kind of moving to uh, what we are used to. Now, I can tell you, the snook are still on the beaches. Uh, well, as of two days ago, they have been. We've had a lot of west winds, so I have not been out there to go out there and even look for bait or look for those same snook I see hovering everywhere. We'll see what happens after this next week goes by. I think next week I'll probably have a much better report for you on how that's going to happen. I can also tell you that in the back bays, 
the trout bite has been insane. Lots of big trout. These bluefish, Rick, I, I don't even know what to tell you. I think these things are just going to be a local thing moving forward. They have not left. We're still catching them like crazy. And on the other side of it, if you get near our passes, where I normally would be catching these pompano right now, it's get starting, starting, Rick, I'll just say it's starting to become a mackerel fest. No, oh. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. These fish, just like I think these tarpon are moving to the back, I think the mackerel are moving from the north. And moving forward, I'm, I'm hoping I can tell you another week or two, the kingfish have shown up full speed, but I don't see that happening yet until this thing, you know, cools off and get some cool weather and things get into that, you know, fall, winter, winter phase. Mm-hmm. It's, it's coming. There's no doubt. I, I, I went hunting this week and it's just too early. I mean, it's too hot and the, the deer aren't moving and the, you know, there's just not fall in the air. Everything's still alive. You know, everything's yeah. green. Um, it, 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 it's just time and it's, it's time for yeah. it to change. And I th- I'm with you. I think it'll change I, this I, week. I think when you talk to Ray, he's going to tell you about kingfish up there. Probably. I'll, I'll bet. Definitely triple tail. I'd ask him about that because we have not seen those big boys come down yet. Now, the offshore guys that, that have federal permits are still allowed to go after those big red snapper. And they're going out there 150, 160 feet of water, Rick, because that's where you do red snapper in my neck of the woods. It's far, but it's worth it if you want to keep, you know, two per person. But they did say to me, before it got windy, when they got out there and the red snapper fight wasn't awesome, they crushed some big gag grouper out there. Huh. So. It, re- it would really suck, I know, Rick, to have a bycatch 20-pound gag groupers, but they had to suffer through that. They still got their limit on red, but that's how it went for them this week. Woo! That's some good fishing. I'd like to be doing that. There's no doubt. All right, buddy, as always, we appreciate it. Please tell me we can talk with you next week. Uh, we will absolutely looking forward to it, Rick. Thank you, Greg. Take care. Hi. Captain Greg Stamper. Our thanks to Greg Stamper. He had a great Southwest report where he said that fall is just not in the air yet. They're still fishing summertime. How about you, Ray Markham? What do you have to say? Well, you can call it fall, you can call it summer, you can call it whatever the heck you want. But to me, this is the precursor of doo-doo getting ready to occur. <laughs> <laughs> is this a doo-doo alert? Yeah, it kind of is. Uh, Thursday, we've, we've got a front coming that I'm anticipating something like 20, 25 mile an hour winds. Ooh, come on. Uh, no, at, at least. And I mean, this is just, this is a typical fall, you know, pattern. These things will get a little bit more frequent, a little more frequent about once a week, finally. And then you can call it winter as soon as it gets below about seven. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, I'm for that. How was your fishing this week? Um, actually it wasn't bad coming off last week's full moon. We had uh, pretty good action with redfish, um, uh, lots of snook. Uh, I can't say trout was a real stellar thing. Um, but we're catching a few and, um, uh, guys that are fishing uh, along the edge of the Gulf where, uh, all the stone crab traps have been dropped are still doing real well with triple tail. So, you know, that's, that's kind of the going thing right now, but there's a whole bunch of people that are just getting ready for this um, Old Salt Fishing uh, Club, King of the Beach. It's coming up uh, starting on the 4th, I believe it is. I think it's next Thursday. And um, they're catching uh, a lot of Spanish mackerel and a lot of kingfish. Both of mm-hmm. them are in the tournament, but the big butt, I and mean, uh, because we've had some patchy red tide along the Gulf, uh, as far as uh, 10 to 12 miles out, um, what we're probably looking at is guys that are going to do the best are going to be starting somewhere around 40 to 60 feet offshore uh, when they're going to be looking for their big kingfish. Gotcha. So, you know, it we anything can happen with this front. This front is going to. Right now, we've got south and southeast winds. They're going to be shifting more to the south and southwest probably uh, by uh, tomorrow night and, and then continuing around to the west. And then 
like you gosh, it's going to blow the hinges off the door and, and more than likely whatever we got for, for a red tide out there, is it going to get broken up or it's going to be heading it uh, towards shore again? So, yeah, I think this front will do it for you. Uh, so, yeah. hopefully so. Yeah, Ray, that's a that's a really good report. I know the guys along the King of the Beach certainly hope that thing's that thing's gone and it looks like it will be. It's Kingfish tournament season again over there, and I am glad to hear it. Uh can we you talk bet. can we check with you next week? Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Raymond. Take care. All right, buddy. We'll catch you later. Now let's shoot on up into northwest Florida and check in with the man from KC Sport Fishing Adventures. Captain Kevin Lanier. Kevin, how are you? Hey, Captain Mike, we're doing just great. There's fall in the air. There is here. fall in the air. Now, now fall affects the number of days a week you get to fish, doesn't it? Well, you know, it can affect the hours. You know, those days get shorter, so we uh, we kind of have to wind it down a little bit earlier. Well, we're supposed to get a little wind, too, aren't we? Oh, yeah. I've been looking at that thing come out this weekend. Good Lord, I'm surprised I haven't given it a name yet. <laughs> Don't say that. That ain't funny. Don't say that. That's well, gonna, I know it's that's not funny, but it, the fact is, it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tell you what, after after learning everything I could about meteorology and going to college and all that, I finally found a weather report that you can count on, and it just made my life so much better. What is that? Well, it's the truck forecast. Okay. You don't know about the truck forecast? No, I don't know about the truck forecast. Really? Yeah. You, you walk out to your truck in the morning. If it's got dew on it, you go fishing. If it doesn't have any dew, there's too much wind, you don't go fishing. And if it's got too much dew, you plan on coming home early because the humidity is too high. How hard is that? <laughs> well, you know, in Florida, you can pretty much count on that every day. So I guess that would be a good one. You walk out to your truck in the morning. Next next time you walk out to your truck in the morning and it's dry, I'm going to bet you you don't end up staying out that day. Well, you're probably right. We'll I wouldn't see. argue with you. <laughs> Tell me about your fishing. How's it been? Well, you know, we got that little federal red snapper season going on. And, uh, you know, it's funny how they timed that right with the full moon. And we've all learned over the last year or so that red snapper bite gets a little tentative uh, when the full moon's out. So we've got a few of them. We've got a few other nice fish. But I will tell you what, the dolphin are absolutely terrible right now. And so are the sharks. Oh, golly. The dolphin, uh, of course, you mean the what we call porpoise. porpoise. I don't want anybody thinking you're getting overrun with mahi. But um, it, it's just nuts. And and that's a that's a learned behavior for them, isn't it? They didn't do that 20, 30 years ago. Oh, I mean, it's got to be because they know when we're there, we're – you know, we're reeling them up. They're uh, taking them. I bet we're going 50-50 right now. Mm, 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 mm. Getting your vermilions. Um, yeah, we're getting some vermilions. Yeah, we're but I mean, the, the, the dolphin are grabbing your vermilions, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're getting them. Yeah, they're getting them. We've, uh, you know, we've uh, we've struggled, uh, but, you know, we're getting our fish. Yeah, yeah. You getting porgies? What else you getting? Uh, we're getting some, uh, we got, we got some gags. We've gotten, uh, you know, uh, a few real nice Almaco jacks, you know, which have come up as a surprise and, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's just been good days of fishing, but it's, you know, people are going home frustrated because, you know, you're losing some really nice fish to a lot of porpoise. Yep. Yep. Well, another way you, one thing you can count on. They ain't going to let us thin out the porpoises. That ain't going to happen, okay? If no. If, all them people sitting on their couches watching TV talk about how pretty they are. And yeah. I agree with them. They're beautiful fish, but my goodness. Yep. Yeah. If, if there's an animal in the world that's got the ah factor, it's flipper. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Any blackfin tuna? Uh, no blackfin tuna. We've... Uh, we haven't been uh, getting out quite that far uh, here lately, and uh, you know, so it's been a little, you know, it's been a little more of a challenge. But uh, you know, the inshore fishing is going real well too. We're getting uh, um, some speckled trout and everything, and we're seeing a lot of dead fish around. But still, uh, we've uh, kind of skirted the red tide uh, actual water test. So, um, but uh, you know, it's kind of a situation where you see dead fish out there and you wonder. Uh, but, you know, trout bites has been pretty good. Good deal. Good deal. Kevin, as always, we appreciate it. Please tell me we can check with you next week. 
Captain Rick will be here as long as fish are there. You got it, Captain Kevin Lanier. Now, we're going out the panhandle. That means we get to talk to Tyler Massey. Captain Tyler, how are you? We're doing good, Rick. How are you guys? Well, we're doing fine, but more importantly, how's your fishing? Uh, fishing's been uh, pretty good. You know, we've had uh, you know, still some, some busy busy charter weeks, you know, the last last week or so. Uh, you know, good fishing inshore and uh, pretty good fishing offshore. You know, the, the blue water fishing slowed down a little bit. We are catching quite a few mahi-mahis on some scattered grass and stuff in the, you know, 15-mile range, just the, the random stuff. Nothing you can, you know, count on, but uh -huh. um, that's been a lot of fun. Uh, just, you know, any kind of bigger weed patches or, you know, built-up lines have been producing, um, you know, some, they're, they're not, you know, not quite big enough to gaff them, but you can, you sling them in the boat pretty good, but they're a lot of fun. Good deal. So that's going to be, uh, that's going to be the, you know, the best, you know, blue water type action for that. Otherwise, we've been catching our red snappers on our offshore charters, so that's been keeping us busy and at pretty easy limits, some pretty good fishing. Now, it's, it's two per person over there now? Two per person, 16 inches, and we can keep them until... November fifth, and that's so only the on the last day. only on federally permitted vessels, right? Yep, that's it. Yep, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well that makes sense. I I tell you what, the Gulf Council has been ahead of the Atlantic Council for for a number of years now. So your white marlin are gone. The water cool off too much? Yeah, I, I haven't heard too much. Um, you know, it's, we haven't had the, the calmest weather the last week or ten days or so. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I haven't I haven't heard much for the reports from the the billfish but um you know uh not saying they're, they're all gone but it's it's going to be a little bit harder to, yep. to pick up a few i think gotcha any reds on the beach yep that's been uh it's been good uh redfish are starting to show up we know we get our a nice fall redfish run from oversized mostly oversized fish um that come to our area to get ready to spawn mm -hmm. um we've been you know seeing a couple schools in the bay uh, a lot of fish down the beach you can catch them from the surf surf fishing um, you know, with set rods in your rod holders, using sand fleas or, or cut, cut, you know, mullet or something like that. Um, also, a lot of redfish in our bay. Uh, they're starting to get on the Pensacola Bay Bridge, and that's a, a you know easy place to catch them. You can catch them during the day or at nighttime. Um, cut bait or live bait works great. Perfect. Perfect. Great report. All right, go back to catching your snapper, and let's talk about it next week, okay? All right. We'll be here. Thanks to Captain Tyler Massey. That wraps up our trip around the state tonight. And you know what? It was a pretty good one. Uh, up in the northeast corner, boy, David Borries is still loving the red fishing. It's been fantastic. Those guys getting their hearts broke, having to throw back the flounder. I sure hope this idea works because it's painful to, to release a five-pound flounder. I promise you that. Get down around Jimmy Ross. He's got sharks all over him, but they've also had very good fishing for tarpon and snook. Uh, just stellar days surprise me he is not doing better when he's fishing around the bait schools doing better between the bait schools as there's not as many ladyfish spanish and uh, little sharks to bite through his his tackle so come on down into stewart and john Earhart said there's a few dolphin and there's been a few sailfish uh mixed in that's not bad news i've also heard reports of sailfish off of saint augustine in 130 feet of water that they've been schooled up there. So our sailfish population seems fine. Alan Sherman was in a good mood, said that their fishing's been really quite good. They're doing well on yellowtail, doing pretty good on muttons, fishing all in all has been quite good. The Keys is always good. I don't even want to talk about that. I'm too jealous. You start coming up the West Coast, and for once, Captain Steve Dahlfish said fishing was not so great. Their reds are uh, holding offshore because the water temperature is still too warm for them to move inshore, and uh, he's itching for that to happen. But they're starting to see some triple tails. Same thing as you work your way up all the way through Ray Markham. They're catching Spanish, they're catching kings, and they're picking off yellowtail. You get up into the Big Bend, they're enjoying the heck out of the snapper season, but for their vermilions and pergies, they're having a horrible time with the bottlenose dolphin taking them off the hook. And, folks, I promise you they can do it. Tyler Massey's glad Federal uh, Red Snapper open right now. They're doing pretty well with their limits on that. So, all in all, not a bad week. I know I've certainly enjoyed it. I hope you have, too. Next week, we're going to do something special. Next week, we have a new organization to talk about called South Atlantic Fishing Environmentalists. 
and it's all about a new drive that we're starting called Save the Mahi. Go on floridasportsman.com. Check out the Save the Mahi petition and sign it. Folks, we do not have as many Mahi left in Florida as we should have. We need to do something about it. Okay, this episode of Florida Sportsman Action Spotter has been brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here by Shimano, bringing people and nature together. By Tournament Master Chum. Oh, yes, it's the best chum on earth. By Nassara Paradise Reynolds, your dream billfish destination. By DOA Lures, the unfair advantage. And by Young Boats. You want the finest in flat spay and offshore hybrids? You need to check out youngboats.com. All right, folks, until next week, remember, Go on floridasportsman.com, sign the Save the Mahi petition. We've got to get some legislation moving. Until next week, I'm Captain Rick Riles, and we will see you on the rim.